Every day we are bombarded by environmental agents that damage our cells. Things like UV radiation and chemical exposure such as air pollution and cigarette smoke. Even the byproducts of metabolism, such as free radicals, can damage cells. These damaging agents can make changes to the DNA in our cells. DNA encodes the information needed to make proteins, which are the building blocks of our body. To keep two metres of DNA organised within the nucleus, it is wound around special structures called histones much like thread on a spool. Damage to DNA can include single strand breaks, double strand breaks, changes to the DNA code, DNA kinks, and DNA sticking together. It has been estimated that an individual cell can suffer up to one million DNA changes per day. Most of the time, our cells do a very good job of dealing with DNA damage. A special sentinel protein called P53 is recruited rapidly in response to DNA damage. P53 slides along the DNA until it finds a critical site. It then binds to this site. P53 then sends the message to halt cell division until DNA is repaired, or if damage is too severe, the cell is destroyed. P53 is therefore known as the guardian of the genome. If the DNA damage is able to be repaired, a very complex and highly regulated sequence of events follows, which is orchestrated by three main molecular machines. This is machine number one, which is searching for a broken DNA end. Once it has found the broken end, machine one activates this molecule. Once active, the molecule participates in a series of interactions leading to machine number two. Here it is again, this time activating another molecule. This is machine two, assembling into its active form. Machine two builds a chain to link to machine three. Here is machine three, which has also built a chain.
the final molecule in this repair complex, BRCA1, forms from two identical halves, which come together and bind. BRCA1 then begins the recruitment of further complexes that carry out the actual DNA repair. After a long chain of events not shown here, the DNA is finally repaired. If the DNA damage is too great to be repaired, then the cell is destroyed through a specialised form of cell death called apoptosis. Alternatively, it can be removed by cells of the immune system, known as killer T cells, which recognise the damaged cell and then destroy it. Here, we have seen a number of ways that cells can protect themselves from environmental damage. For example, the guardian of the genome, P53, can stall the cell while the decision is made to repair DNA via BRCA1. Or if damage is too severe, the cell is removed by programmed cell death or killed by specialised immune cells. Most of the time, DNA damage is not a problem because of protective mechanisms such as these. But what happens if these defence mechanisms themselves are damaged? A tiny change in P53, shown here in bright blue, results in a protein that is unable to securely bind to DNA. This means that no decisions can be made about whether to repair DNA or destroy the cell. Likewise, inherited changes in this area of BRCA1 alter the protein so that it cannot interact with its identical half. The DNA repair process is therefore interrupted. Without functional P53 or BRCA1, over time, cells can accumulate more and more DNA damage. These damaged cells are more likely to grow and divide out of control, leading to formation of tumours. P53 alterations are present in more than half of all human cancers, collectively making them the most common event in the development of cancer. Alterations in the BRCA1 gene lead to an increased risk for cancer as part of hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome. Inherited BRCA1 errors result in a lifetime risk of 50 to 80% for the development of breast cancer and 30 to 50% for ovarian cancer. Women afflicted with BRCA1 alterations face a lifetime of constant surveillance. However, some women opt to ameliorate the risk of cancer by surgical removal of ovaries, total mastectomy, and taking tamoxifen medication. In addition to breast and ovarian cancer, BRCA1 errors are also implicated in causing pancreatic and prostate cancer. However, alterations in these defence mechanisms on their own won't necessarily lead to the development of cancer. Most often, more than one type of alteration is needed for a cell to become malignant. In contrast to errors in defence mechanisms, which allow accumulation of DNA damage. A change in this protein, called RAS, causes uncontrolled cell division. RAS is involved in the signalling within cells that controls how often a cell divides. The instruction to divide is received by the cell and communicated to the inside, causing a chain of molecules to link together. One, two, three, and four. 
A regulating molecule normally keeps RAS switched off. To turn it on, RAS interacts with a large molecule in the chain, which opens it, allowing the regulating molecule to leave and another molecule to enter. RAS is now active. Active RAS can then switch on molecules of the cell division pathways. Once RAS has completed this task, it needs to be turned off again. RAS interacts with another large molecule, which cleaves the switch, turning the protein firmly off. A tiny error in RAS causing a single amino acid change creates a form of the protein that is always switched on. This means that the cell division pathways are also constantly switched on. This single change has devastating effects because altered RAS causes cells to multiply outside the normal limits controlling cell division, leading to tumour formation. Errors in P53, BRCA1 and RAS are just three examples of the thousands of molecular mistakes implicated in causing cancer. As mentioned previously, it is important to note that cancer usually only develops as a result of a combination of multiple molecular mistakes. Changes in DNA are a part of life. Most of the time they are not a problem and we are protected by a rigorous system of checks and balances. Given the number of DNA changes suffered by our cells on a daily basis, cancer is a rare outcome. The Peter McCallum Cancer Centre is one of the world's leading cancer research, education and treatment centres and is Australia's only public hospital solely dedicated to caring for people affected by cancer. Peter Mac is the largest and most advanced cancer research site in Australia. Our internationally renowned cancer laboratories seek fundamental biological and biomedical discoveries and aim to facilitate the development and application of these discoveries to their full therapeutic potential. We are also committed to offering state-of-the-art diagnostic services and treatment for patients, directly resulting from our own discoveries in the lab and the most innovative research and technology from around the world. The Parkville Familial Cancer Centre offers cancer risk assessment, genetic testing and counselling and medical advice and management, as well as psychological support to those concerned about cancer. Furthermore, we are actively involved in cancer prevention strategies such as the ban on smoking and avoiding UV exposure. Indeed, Peter Mac has been instrumental in the Australia-wide ban on commercial tanning beds. In the next instalment in this series, we will take a look at epigenetics, or heritable changes to DNA that don't involve changes in the underlying DNA sequence, and how these can lead to cancer.